must be Nathan. Yep, that's me. You must be Jack the Nine F. I've heard of you from Thomas during one of his visits. Yep, that's me. Allow me to introduce you to my friends. The big blue W1 is Pegasus. You can call me Peggy for short. Nice to meet you, Peggy, but I'm confused. I thought only one of your class was built and eventually scrapped. Well, Nathan, I actually happen to be that same engine. Wait, you mean you're the British Enterprise? Well, that's what they were going to call me originally, but never got around to it. I was going to be scrapped, but I was saved. Still, the name British Enterprise was too formal, so I chose the name Pegasus. Peggy is my nickname. Uh, fair enough. The green pannier tank engine is Amy. Hi there. Hello, Amy. And I'm a very hard-working little engineer. That's nice. I'm a hard-working shunter, too. Anyway, the high mech diesel over there is called Tech. Nice to meet you, Nate. Nice to meet you, too, Tech. I must say, you're nothing like those rude and snobbish diesels. And the O-1 beside me is MacArthur, our reliable goods engine. Nice to meet you, MacArthur. <laughs> it's nice to meet you too, Nathan. I hope you're a tank engine who knows how to respect your superior- <clears throat> That's enough, MacArthur. Sorry about him, Nathan. MacArthur means well but he can rather be pompous and act like he's superior to others. That's all right, Jack. I've seen it in other engines before. Well, anyway, since you've just arrived, Nathan, you can join us on our evening of ghost stories. Ghost stories? Yes, Nathan. You see, tomorrow is Halloween. And my friends and I enjoy ourselves by telling spooky stories. <laughs> you should see Amy's face every time we tell ghost stories. She screams every time she gets scared. I do not. You do too? MacArthur just shut up. She does not scream at every spook story we tell. Thank you, At least you're sensible here. Is MacArthur really always like this? Yeah, most of the time. He's the James of the Lion region. Very rowdy and pouty. Am not! R2! Alright, I get your point. But anyway, I like telling stories and I enjoy listening to them from others. And so to this day, that evil truck continues to hunt Sodor, trying to take revenge on Percy, because he blames him for his demise. But he never gets his chance, and most likely never will. Ooh, that was pretty good, Nathan. I never thought such a truck would go that far. Well, Princess Marie Louise told me of her accident with two evil trucks that caused her to have a crash and accidentally kill six innocent people. That truly horrified me. I'm not gonna lie. It left me shocked too. Marie certainly has my sympathy. I mean, whoever thought trucks would want to cause such a disaster? Well, at least most trucks n agree to never go that far, despite being troublesome. Anyways, it's your turn to tell a story, Jack. I actually do have one. It's actually a story about that happened here on Furry Railways. Oh, really? Is this the story about your experience with Todd when he was a ghost? Because we already know this one after hearing it from Thomas. <laughs> Including the bit when you nearly leaked boiler sludge when he scared your frames off. MacArthur, I'm gonna tell you this once. SHUT. YOUR. MOUTH. <sighs> Anyway, no, it's not the story of Todd's ghost. It's something that happened a long time ago before Ferry Railways come to be. It centers on an engine known as Leonidas. 
Who? Leonidas? I've never heard of an ninja with that name before. Me neither. Who was Leonidas, Jack? Well, have you guys ever heard of the story of the Half Engine from Sodor? Yeah, we heard about it from Thomas. Why? Well, Leonidas was just like the Half Engine herself. <sighs> Many years ago, back when Ferry Railways was just the Fox Railway at the time, there was a Great Western Railway Priory Tank. His name was Leonidas. He was called that because he had the face of a lion. Unfortunately, something went wrong with him when he was built. You see, his face was only half of lion face, and the other was that of a smoke box door. Because of this, Leonidas had to suffer a lot of pain, and most of the time, whenever he did some work on the railway, we could barely understand what he tried to say because of his pain. Most engines at the time, including myself, did all we could to show him sympathy. We didn't know if he appreciated or not, but it was the right thing to do. However, some engines abused him and made fun of him for it. In fact, even some workmen and crews began mocking and laughing at Leonidas for who he was. I'm sorry to say, all of this caused Leonidas to change. What do I mean by that? I mean the abuse caused him to snap. He became angry, aggressive, and would always take his anger out on everyone, even those who sympathised with him. I remember one day, I wasn't sure, but it sounded like he always kept telling us that one day he would make us all pay with hellish pain, and then we'll be sorry for letting him suffer. We tried to help him, but he refused to accept our kindness and began bumping us around and causing us to have accidents. The other engines and I, as well as the workmen, told him that he was causing too much confusion and delay. But Leonidas didn't care and continued to be a violent engine. One day, sadly, the controller decided to send Leonidas away for scrap because he was getting tired of him taking his anger out on everyone because of his pain. One of the arrogant engines who mocked him took Leonidas away. I couldn't be sure, but as he was taken away, I thought I could hear Leonidas making groaning noises like a zombie. About 30 minutes later, I was told of an accident and was sent to clear it. And what I saw still haunts me to this day. You see, the engine that was taking Leonidas away had somehow been cut right in half. One half of him lay on the side by the line, while the other half was gone completely. No one knew how this happened, and they never found out who or what did it. As for Leonidas, he was nowhere to be seen. No one saw him again after that. And to this day, no one knows what happened to the poor engine, or how Leonidas disappeared. However, on very foggy nights, it is believed that Leonidas still haunts the Lion region of Ferry Railways, still groaning from the pain of his half-lion face, and hunting for other engines to take out his revenge on by cutting them in half. And if you're not careful, it could be you. Wow, that was actually really good. Yeah, and you say that Leonidas actually used to live here, Jack? Yes, Tech. I agree that it is a good story. It sends shivers right through your frames. Too bad it's 100% fake, because it's actually pretty intriguing. MacArthur, the story is not fake, it's true! Oh come on, Jack. Engines don't get built with only half a face. And even if they did, it would probably be an illegal thing to do. Besides, 
We've been here for a while now, and we've never seen this Leonidas. So we know your story is not true. MacArthur, I'm serious. Leonidas is real. You're just trying to scare us with another one of your jo- Do I look like I'm joking? Look, I'm not going to bother arguing with you, Jack. I have to take an old coach to the works for an overhaul. And while I'm at it, I will prove that Leonidas is a fake and that you were lying. Oh, sure. And what does he know? Don't worry, Jack. We believe you. <sighs> I know. I just hope MacArthur will too by the end of tonight before it's too late. Why is that? Leonidas doesn't take kindly to those who deny he ever existed. <coughs> I may not believe such a ghost exists, but I do have to admit that Jack's story was a good one. All the same, there's no half-faced lion engine. There never was, and there never will be. Uh, driver? Why am I slowing down? What the? Why have I stopped? That's strange. Your water tank is completely empty. What? But that can't be possible. I filled up my tender before I left the yard. You wait here, MacArthur. The fireman and I are going to get help. What? You, you can't just leave me here. I'm sorry, MacArthur. We don't have any other option. Both our phones currently have no signal out here. So we need to find the nearest signal box and call for help. <sighs> Alright, go ahead then. Just don't be too long, will you? Don't worry, MacArthur. We'll be back as soon as possible. It's okay, MacArthur. It's just the fog in you. There's nothing to be scared to- Oh, God. Someone's come to help me. Um... Hello? Hey, MacArthur. I heard you somehow run out of water and... MacArthur? Are you alright? I think he's in sh- Oh my god! You saw him, didn't you? He, <laughs> yes. <sighs> I tried to warn you, MacArthur, but you just didn't want to listen. Still, you were lucky. Leonidas rarely spared anyone who encounters him. But wh why did he spare me? Perhaps he knew you'd find his story hard to believe, but you still found it intriguing. And it's possible he spared you because whilst you may be a bit pompous, you are nowhere near as bad as the engines who abused him. Also, remember what I said that some workmen used to make fun of him from my story? Y yeah Well, after Leonidas disappeared, one of those workmen believed he had somehow ran off, but probably was never seen again because someone else caught him and scrapped him. 
I remember him saying, Good riddance to that pathetic scrap heap who always got worked up over nothing. I'm glad he's gone. He was sent to do maintenance on the track that night. But by the following morning, only half of his body was found by the track. I was the one who found it. Like I said, you're lucky that you weren't made into one of his victims tonight. So let this be a lesson to you, MacArthur. Never underestimate the supernatural. Because if you do, there's no telling what could happen.